I'll make a start and welcome you all to this uh, webinar focusing on pastoral and student support at the college. Uh, my name is Marion Baker. I'm one of the assistant principals at the college. Um, I look after aspects of student well-being and support, progression, and so on. And we're going to talk tonight in particular about how we how we look after students outside of the classroom. That kind of you know whole college experience that we that we try to provide to students. Um, I'm going to let my colleagues who've joined us tonight as well introduce themselves properly in a minute. But just very briefly, we've also got here um, Lucy Lucy Stevenson, who's one of our progress tutors. Um, we've got Anthony Lupton joining us. He's one of our guidance directors. And we've also got Bernie Millen. Bernie's a, a current student who's, who's kindly offered to join in as well to, to share her sort of experience of being a student at the college and of being supported. Um, before I let them sort of have, have their, their say, um, I'll just explain how, how it's going to work over the next uh, 20, 30 minutes or so. Um, I'll, I'll do a little bit of an introduction about how we support students at the college. I'll ask my colleagues then and Bernie to say a little bit about their perspective. And then really I'll just throw it open to questions from you. I'm sure we've got a good number of parents and of prospective students as well. So you'll be able to type your questions in at any point as I'm talking. And when, as I say, when we've had a chance to, to say a little bit, uh, we'll turn to those questions and we'll, we'll answer as many as we can. So don't wait to, to, to be invited, simply type as you're ready uh, and we'll, we'll pull those questions together and do our best to answer them. So the theme of this webinar, as I say, is pastoral support. And the thing I want to say right from the outset is that we take this aspect of our work incredibly seriously. Um, students are only with us for a couple of years, but in that time, uh, we make sure that they, they grow from the point at which they, they've left school and come to us to, to, to adults who are ready for the outside world, for employment, for university, or whatever it might be. Um, and we always say that we've got two sort of roles as a college. One is to make sure that people are successful, but the other is to make sure that we've looked after people, that we've looked after our students in every way. That means keeping you safe, that means ensuring your well-being, uh, that means helping out when life gets in the way, when challenges emerge as, as they may do over the time you're with us, and it means helping you to, to move on as well. We do that in a variety of ways, and, and, and one of those ways is, is actually through teaching and learning. So even though the focus of, of, of this session is going to be on what happens outside the classroom, I do want to say that you will be looked after amongst other people by your teachers. Your teachers will deliver their courses. Um, they will make sure that you learn, but they will also make sure that, that you're okay. They get to know you. They're the people you'll spend longest with while you're at college. Um, they may well refer you to, to, to one of us for additional support. So your teachers are there as an absolute solid foundation of the pastoral support that the college provides. But in addition to that, we have a team of progress tutors. So each student at the college will be allocated a tutor. You will spend a couple of hours a week with that tutor. They will be, as I often describe it, your, your best friend on the staff, your advocate. Um, they'll be the, the person that provides the, the link between teachers and parents and students. Uh, they're the people that will keep an eye on your progress to make sure that you're, you're making that progress and that will also look after progression, meaning moving on. And I'll give Lucy a, a chance in a moment to say more about that role which she represents. We also, as I say, have a smaller team of guidance directors. Think of those perhaps as uh, like a head of year, um, somebody who has oversight of your well-being and of your progress, someone who you might never meet. They're there to help out if, if things get particularly tough. Progress tutors work closely with those guidance directors and will we'll work out the best support for you. Um, but they're, they're really crucial senior staff. They're the fixers. They're the people that will make things you know, right for you, that will refer you on if you need external support. Um, and, and, and for those of you that need them, they will be really important. Anthony, as I say, a guidance director, will have a chance to, uh, to introduce his role as well. But that's not where it stops. We've got a team, for example, of learning support staff who are there to, to help out when uh, particular study skills become an issue or where there are additional needs that need to be addressed. We have a college counsellor. We have a, a listening service for those that don't quite need counselling support. Uh, we've got people that will look after your health in the sense of being um, uh, first aiders, mental health first aiders. We have um, a college nurse. We've got people that will help with your progression. And, and if I can just make a, a little plug for the session that's on at half past six for higher education and career support, they're very much part of of our general student support as well, and they will talk to you, as I say, separately. So there is a, a huge team of people here whose, whose focus is on looking after you outside the classroom 
and making sure that things work out for you. So I can see some questions coming in already, but what I'll do at this point is hand over firstly to, to Lucy, if that's okay. And, and, and Lucy will, will hopefully give a, a little sense of the work of, of a progress tutor. Thanks, Lucy. Okay, thank you, Marion. Okay, so it's like Marion said, the role of the progress tutor is, the best way I can describe it is to liken it to your form tutor at secondary school. Um, you see us for two and a half hours a week, um, and it's our role to make sure that you feel happy and supported while you're in college. We support you with your academic studies, so we will work and liaise with your subject teachers. We monitor your progress. We very regularly have one-to-one -one sessions with you within the um, tutorial programme where we'll look at how you're progressing in your subjects, how you're doing with assessments and with your work, and we'll help you set targets and put interventions in place um, if you're not quite where you want to be. Um, but we will also challenge and motivate you to be successful. Our role is to make sure that you progress through your two years at QE so that you leave and you can move on to whatever it is that you want to do. As well as supporting you academically, we support your well-being. So initially that will revolve around helping you settle into college life. Um, coming to sixth form is very different to school. Um, learning A-levels and studying A-level subjects are very different to GCSEs. So we will help you and teach you how to become a good A-level student. For example, how to organize files, take notes, reference materials for your subjects. These are all things that your progress tutor will be able to help you with. Will help with well-being. So if you have any issues either in college or outside of college, the progress tutor would be the member of staff, the person that you would come to initially to help you deal with that. Alongside all of that support, we deliver a tutorial program every week to you um, that revolves around a number of different topics. Like I said, initially, it is helping you get settled into college. Um, we will help you get involved with groups and associations that we have here, because as well as, as wanting you to do well academically, we want you to develop your your personal well-being to be a well-rounded individual and getting involved in groups such as student associations sports debating so clubs history clubs computer clubs are a great way to do that so we will help you do that um, we will help you research your next steps so a big part of our role particularly in the second year of your studies here at college is helping you research what you're going to do when you move on we guide you through the UCAS the applying to university progress um, process and we'll help you look for apprenticeships alongside our uh, very knowledgeable careers team. We also deliver uh, tutorial programs on safeguarding, on British values and lots of other things as well that we do through the two years that you're with us. We monitor your attendance and your engagement with your subjects and we'll, li we'll liaise with your parent parents as necessary too. But our main role is to support you, to guide you through those two years, to make sure that you feel happy and supported. Um, and I think that's about it, isn't it, Marion? Anything else? That's great. Thanks. <laughs> as, we, as we get questions, as I say, I can see quite a few. We'll, we'll come back to you, Lucy, maybe with some of those and you can give us sort of yeah. a, a progress to perspective. Now, Anthony is also here as guidance director. When we were getting set up, I know there was quite a delay with Anthony. I don't know if that's been solved. But I'll, I'll invite Anthony to, to, to have a, a say now. We may have a little pause while he picks up on us. Um, we can look at Bernie's cat there while we're waiting for Anthony. Uh, okay. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes, you're perfect. Thanks. Uh, far from perfect, probably, but hopefully uh, a little intimidating there when Marion said he introduced my role as a bit of a fixer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, not quite like that, or not quite as concerning as it might seem. Um, but as Marion uh, rightly pointed out, the idea really is that a guidance director is you're probably most familiar with it in terms of most of the things that you might expect from ahead of year. So as Lucy's explained, uh, you would initially be working with your tutor on any aspects where you needed any support, as well as with, with various uh, areas of pastoral development and education and well-being. Should it be the case that the support that your progress tutor puts in place with you um, doesn't solve any difficulties that you might have in one way, area or another, then it's likely in, uh, at some point that you may well be working with me as well to try and see if we can't get you back on track. If it's an issue of attendance or if things aren't working out across your subjects in terms of your academic progress, you're not quite up to target, uh, then we can work together. 
In terms of that wider well-being as well, uh, I'm the one that you would be referred to if, for example, um, um, you really need some support from an outside agency. Uh, so um, whether that was to do with a, a health matter or mental health issue or, or work with other agencies that may be able to help you in one form or another, I would act as the link with that. Um, it's also the case that were your progress tutor not available at a particular moment, um, if you've already had dealings with me, then it may well be that you can you can use me in the same way as well. So you'll know where I am and, and I'll be as available uh, as your tutor should you need any help uh, at, at a particular moment. Um, but as a general uh, as a general rule, it would tend to be that if your work with your progress tutor uh, hasn't enabled you to do as you want and to be exactly where you want to be, uh, then I'll probably be brought into the loop as well to see if there's anything that, that I can do to help. Fantastic. Thanks, Anthony. And again, uh, you know, we, we may well come to come to Anthony uh, as we as we answer some of these questions. And then uh, finally, Bernie, who um, is very kindly, as I say, offered to, to give a sort of student perspective. This isn't rehearsed. We've not given Bernie a script. So I don't know what she's going to say, um, but Bernie's a great student and, uh, and we're very grateful to it. So, Bernie, do you want to give us a, a sense of, of, of what it's been like to be supported as a student? Sorry about my cat. Um, but, um, yeah, you get a lot of support from your form, my form tutors. Um, I also got a lot of support from um, from learning support because earlier on this year or late last year, I um, I felt like I needed extra time for one of my subjects, and they've been like a lot of help with that, and they've also helped me financially um, because I currently live on my own in Darlington, and they give me a bursary, so. And do you, and that's brilliant. Do you want to do you want to say a little bit about um, your your tutor's role in because you're a second year student, aren't you, Bernie? Yeah. You're, yeah. You're coming to the end of your time here, you're moving on. Do you want to say a little bit about how your tutor supported that process of um, my ready? my tutor, uh, Lisa? She supported me a lot through like trying to apply for uni. Honestly, if it wasn't for her, I would have been so lost. Like I, I didn't know where to start, but she put it in small bits and she like allowed me to take it like day by day. And um, just helped like educate me on what like what you just point there are and like what you use like she just gave me a lot of opportunities to like look for like different types of unis because I was very set uh, uh, on my first year of college like QA I was very set on one subject like I wanted to do medicine and I wanted to go to like a set uni but she allowed me to like explore different types of courses and what's best for me and I think she's helped me mentally as well because I was very stressed during that time. Great, thanks, Bernie. And like I said with the others, it may well be that we uh, that we come back to you for your sort of point of view in yeah. a minute as well. So what I think we'll do at this stage then, uh, about halfway through, is to start looking at some of the questions that are, that are coming in. And some of them are you can give fairly brief responses to, uh, nice straightforward questions. Some of them might take a, a little bit longer and I'll try and, try and get through everything if I can. So I've got a question about tutor groups and how those are put together, are tutor groups random? or are we able to, to, to ask to be put with a certain person? So the, the, the tutor groups are random in the sense that um, uh, we, we, we realize that we're taking students when they come to us from a range of different schools and backgrounds and so on. And it's very important that students get a chance to meet with new people uh, and that those groups are all sort of representative of the college as a whole. So in that sense, the way in which we put the groups together are, are, are sort of randomized. You will be with people in your year um, but other than that, it will be a cross section. And of course, the same applies to your subject lessons, where you, you will be with people maybe from a school that you went to, maybe not, and you will make new friends and you will get to know new people. Having said that, we always, when people come to us through the enrollment process, we always listen, we always want to make sure people settle and people are happy. And when there are particular requests, we're going to do our best to do the right thing by the students. So, you know, don't let me don't let what I just said put you off. If, if you feel that you need to say to us when you, when you come in, in August, look, there's a particular reason why I need a particular arrangement. Of course, we'll hear you. And of course, we'll, we'll do what we need to make sure that you feel that you feel happy. 
Um, there's a question about um, mental health, uh, a question which says, you know, what, what do you do to support minor mental health issues such as panic disorders? Are there staff who can deal with panic attacks? So when it comes to, to, to mental health issues, I think there's, there's two aspects to it, aren't there? And, and they're both in the question. One is the kind of the immediate crisis. So a panic attack situation, for example. We have on the staff a number of staff, a number of colleagues who are trained mental health first aiders. So we would see a panic attack, I suppose, as, as, a, as a first aid incident or something that needs some immediate help. There are particular techniques that, that can support students in that situation. And you would almost be put immediately in touch with one of those, those mental health first aiders who, who would sort of look after you uh, and ensure that things were OK and liaise with home and liaise with whoever else you needed to support you. But then there's a slightly longer term issue. You know, you use the word disorder in the question. I mean, if there's something more, more long term, well, that tends to be the work then of the guidance director, such as Anthony, somebody who can, you know, make sure that you're getting the right external support, put you in touch with the right agencies and can fill in the gaps. And we do have close relationships, not only with our own sort of counselling and listening services, but with external um, support for, for, for mental health. So two strands to that and hopefully both, both of those um, reassuring. There's a very big and really important question here um, on the impact of, of COVID and of kind of closing the gap. So the, the question is, many of the year 11s have been significantly impacted by COVID, um, missed parts of the correct curriculum, um, social, emotional, mental health, and so on. What measures is QE putting in place to support these new students? Really big question. And you know, there's again, different elements to this. It's partly about the, the process we're in at the moment, the transition process. Um, we currently, as you are finishing off your, your, your courses and getting ready for the next stage, we are in discussion with your schools. We're in contact with teachers, particularly in partner schools. We're discussing individual students and getting a sense of, of where students are at and what they need. I've been having quite a few of those meetings myself. So many students will come to us with us already knowing um, a little bit of the background, the gaps and so on. But then there's also the important sort of process of, of enrollment and induction. Uh, at the first few weeks that you're at college and how in those few weeks uh, we, we get to know you. So we will do some early assessment and those assessments aren't about grading you or anything like that. It's about finding out what the gaps might be in your skills and your knowledge. And many of those will be the result of COVID. Some of them might be the gaps that we're, we're always going to be there as you move from, from school to college. That's our first big job in those first few weeks, getting a sense of where you're at and, and, and what you need. And then, and then in terms of, of, of plugging the gaps, well, uh, you know, we, we have obviously the, the, that assessment and that investigation that would inform what teachers do. But there are, are also in, in, in many subjects opportunities for what are called plus sessions. So these are additional subject sessions uh, on top of your timetabled classes. I've already mentioned learning support and, and Bernie's referred to learning support and the additional help that they can give. We've talked a little bit about some of the support for, for mental health and well-being. Again, the, the colleagues that are in the webinar will play a part in that if that's the sort of gap. So it's an incredibly important question. We've been dealing with it with our own students, as have schools. You know, we understand the issue. And we, we know next year is going to be a bit different to previous years in terms of that. Um, we're going to have a, a big job to do to, to, to get people where they need to be. Uh, and obviously, communication from parents and from students themselves about what's needed and what's maybe missing will be really, really important. Um, is there an LGBT plus support group? Uh, we've got currently a really active group um, on the, the, the student association. So I should say, first of all, particularly at the moment, a really active student association. Lots of students making sure that they have their say, that their voice is heard, that they get involved. They're incredibly proactive. They've done huge numbers of things in the last year or two, despite COVID, around things like environmental issues, diversity, and including LGBT plus. Uh, and, and um, you know, that, that's been a, a fantastic thing. So what we need there is students to keep engaging with that as the years go by to make sure that um, that, that work continues. Um, but short answers, yes. Okay, we've got a question. What do I do if I want to change my subjects just so people don't uh, get bored of me? Can I hand that over to, to Anthony, first of all? Is that okay? Do you want to just say something a little bit about the process if a student feels um, early on that they uh, that they, they, they want to change a program how do we go about that uh, yeah that 
that would be very much a, a, a situation where you would be sent to me for a discussion about, about what we might be able to do about it. In the first instance, we'd look to see whether we could repair the situation in terms of that particular subject. But we'd have to have a wider discussion about what your plans were, what you were hoping to achieve after college and, and what other subjects would be options for you um, um, on the basis of the GCSE qualifications that you already have making sure that, you, that you're only uh, uh, considering subjects that, that, that you have the skills and the qualifications for. Um, so we would have that conversation, uh, first of all, with your existing subject teachers to see whether they thought they could put the support in place that would be able to change things. But if it was really the case, quite early on, so that there was plenty of time for you to catch up in a new subject, um, um, we would have to have a look at, uh, at what subjects there was space in uh, and what it was that you hoped to achieve by the end of the two years, what you wanted to go on and study next or where your career ambitions lay. And we would we would simply attempt to adjust your, your study programme in that way. I would already have done your interview, talked about your subject choices in the first instance. Uh, um, to make sure that it's a good fit uh, with everything else that you're doing. Try and learn the lessons of what might not have worked in the subject that, that um, um, hasn't gone so well for you to make sure that whatever we come up with as, a, uh, as an alternative um, has a higher uh, degree of a, a chance of a successful outcome for you. Um, can I also add, Mary, and I thought of something else we could perhaps mention in regard to the question about um, helping the students catch up in the current circumstances. Uh, the other thing that some of you might find helpful is both uh, during bridging and also through the college website, the subject areas on the college website, you'll find that most of the subjects will put a great deal of voluntary prep work on there that you can do to make sure that you are up to speed with everything that you'll need by the time the lessons start. Um, so there's all sorts of additional uh, uh, documents and exercises and extension and background reading that you can do that will help make you confident that you're ready to go as soon as you start uh, uh, having that content delivered to you. Thanks, Anthony. Yes, that's, that's, that's a really helpful addition as well. Uh, and thanks for your comments on, on changing courses. You know, the, the short answer is we put quite a lot of work into, uh, into getting you on the right, the right programmes and we'll support you a lot at enrolment. And obviously the best thing always is that you pick the right subjects and stick with them. If, if, if that's not possible for whatever reason, in the ways that Anthony's explained, we'll support you, we'll help you, and we'll do it quickly so that you can, you can you know, make sure that you're, you're settled and, and can stay then with your, with your program. Um, great, quite a few more questions. So I will see if I can give some sort of quick short answers to, to some of these and apologies if I miss any out. Um, if I need help, can I just walk into an office and find someone to talk to? Or do we need to make an appointment? It depends a bit. I mean, generally, you can just you can just walk in. I mean, progress tutors, guidance directors will will I'm sure yeah, I can see them nodding and, and Bernie's nodding. They're, they're available as much as they can be. Uh, we we have uh, you know COVID to one side. We have a sort of an open door approach. Um, there are particular times of the year and, and and particular members of staff that you will need to make an appointment with. That's always done through reception. But you will find us really accessible. Um, you know, and I'd include myself there for all of us. You, you knock on the door and we'll do our best to be there for you. Um, we've got a question where, and, and sort of follows on from what we were just saying about subject choices. What do, when do we inform the college about the options we want to do? So I imagine that most students here will, will have had a, an initial discussion already. Um, you will have another chance to, to, to talk to us before you sign on the dotted line. And we are very happy for people to be refining their choices and changing their mind over the remaining months before you enroll with us. Um, you'll have heard a little bit about, about bridging and you know, whatever form bridging takes, there'll be a chance there to explore other subjects that you maybe hadn't thought of. So the, 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 the quick answer is you inform us when you enroll, that's when you do your, your final choosing. And if you finally choose subjects that are very different from the ones you've told us about so far, that's fine. We expect you to, to keep thinking and in some cases to, to change your mind. Okay, and I think there's a second question that, which is very similar to that. How do I change the subject before actually starting? Hopefully, I've addressed that as well. Okay, just, just one there, Marion, about oh, extra yes. time, about extra time in exams if you have it in school. And absolutely, yes, whatever exam requirements you had at school, then they will be passed over to us, and you will get those um, when you're with us at college. Thanks, Lucy. And, and can I stay with you because there's a there's a quick question about the pastoral program as well. Can you tell us a bit more about the the pastoral program, the tutorial program, I, th I think it's probably meant there. 
Um, are you want to say a little bit, Lucy? Yeah, about absolutely. This? It's it's um, it runs over the two years. Like I said at the beginning, the initial few weeks are about getting you settled into college. So we do a lot of work with you um, about the differences between college and school. We look at how to work in your subjects, how to organise your time and your studies. We do a lot of work around safeguarding, so making you knowledgeable about how to stay safe, both in college, online, outside of college. We um, deliver a programme um, around British values. We do lots of sessions, um, like I said before, showing you how to research your next steps, how to, um, you know, create CVs, for example, um, how to behave in interviews, things like that. And a lot of the time in tutorial, not a lot of the time, but some of the time when we don't deliver the tutorial program, that is time for you to actually get on and do some work. So you'll be aware that A-levels are very different to GCSEs. The step up in the work that you have to do is very different and tutorial is also a time to allow you to sit down and get on some work get on with some work whether that be research or coursework um, homework with somebody in the room with you who's able to support and guide you to do that so alongside the tutorial program tutorial is also a time for you to be able to do some college work with some support in the room for you so you can ask questions we can go back to your teachers for you ask for work if there's something that you're not sure on so there's, there's that nice division uh, in the time there as well great thanks lucy i'm conscious of the time um so we're coming up to six and for those of you that haven't had a chance to uh, to meet tim the principal he's doing another session at six i think i i made a plug a few minutes ago for the, the higher education and career session which is at half six if you can make that as well that would be great i'm sorry there are a couple of questions here which i haven't got to so all i would say is if you have more questions whether you put them down tonight or whether they're just in your head, just drop an email to the to the QE inquiries line. We'll we'll get back to you, and we'll do our best to answer because you know we want to make sure that you're feeling comfortable and confident about your application and about what's happening over the next few months. So, can I thank you for joining us? Can I thank Lucy, Anthony, Bernie, Bernie's cat? It's been really nice to have your Sleep company. Now. And uh, you know, enjoy the rest of the evening if you're going to more seminars. And thank you very much indeed for participating. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.